having me here with you today. Uh, you know, I quite often pray that the Lord will give us new viewers. So if you're a new one, you are an answer to prayer. Thanks for being there. And we like to talk about things that are important in the home. And boy, do we have an expert here today. My guest is Vera Jo Strickland. She was born on a farm and I had an, exp I had an experience on uh, my uncle's farm a lot. And some of the things I, I read in her books, you know, it, it just really brought back some great memories. I think every child should have a period of time on a farm, that's for sure. But this lady, uh, she's not only a piano teacher, uh, she married a farmer and she wrote, she has uh, published two books. I think that is amazing. This first one is What Mama Said. And it's, um, or yeah, Mama Said. And uh, it's a devotional for each day. And you know, that always kind of just, how did they do that? 365. I think I checked and she did 366. So uh, for that leap year, you know. And then she's also published her own cookbook. I would really like to go through this and see and now find out from her, you know, what, where did all these recipes come from? So she's my guest. And I'm going to join Stephanie and we're going to make chicken with rosemary butter sauce. Say no more, you know, it'll be good. But I again want to offer you putting an X through anxiety. And I do believe the last few days in America are some like I've never witnessed in my life. I have heard that the suicide rate is up and there's all kinds of anxiousness out there, anxiety. And we're offering you this book for any gift to this ministry. And I tell you, I think a lot of us need it. So I hope you'll take advantage of it. You can write to me at box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758. Or you want to use your credit card or your debit card, that number's on your screen also, 1-800-229-0059. And thank you so much. But this actually could be a totally life-changing book for you, just this little booklet. So I hope that you'll take advantage of it. And I'm over here with Stephanie. Yes. Um, chicken, you love rosemary as much as I do. I love rosemary, yeah. yes, it's very good. That's, so we took some butter and we uh, heated up the pan and we already cooked the chicken breasts. Okay? Yeah, they're supposed to be chicken breasts, but I've been buying chicken tenders, maybe because I live by myself. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't like that real thick piece of meat. Yeah, well, I, you know what, when I get those breasts, I slice them in half this yeah. way. And so I get you, two. I get one it, meal out of both for both of us right, out of one breast. So, so I'm going to put some um, chicken broth in here and let it heat up. And we already cooked these about yes. uh, three, four, five minutes on each side. Yeah, that's a half a cup of chicken broth, and I'm just getting all that yummy goodness off the mm -hmm. bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to do a, a half a cup of heavy whipping cream too. Well, you this know, this is so um, simple. We kind of look for recipes that are. Quick and are easy. you going to cut me up some rosemary? Uh -huh. You're just going to stand Quick and there? easy, and there's none quicker or easier than this, this one. This is so easy. This yes. one. This so one. So this was um, chicken broth, heavy cream. We're going to put a little bit more butter and some rosemary. That's it. That's so it. Simple. So today's June third. Right. I bought another Christmas present oh. this morning. I'm so excited. My I, goal, be, even though I'm behind, I'm so behind because of the virus, because we sold our house, we moved, and everything. My goal is still Thanksgiving. I want to be done by Thanksgiving. So that's my goal. Well, you, uh, I'm telling you, you inspired me. I thought about, I have so many though. Um, I have nine great grandchildren. Now that, that they each have a mama and a yeah, daddy see, and, and all you that. Need, so you need a book? You need a notebook? No, I give each family a You get money. <laughs> yeah, see, she gets cash. And, and I say, I if want you. If she wants to adopt me. I want you to do something together, mm -hmm. not buy some knickknack mm -hmm. with it. And you know, my granddaughter's the best. Yeah, I'm going to put a little more butter and in she here. she sometimes has her kids send me a report. I love that. Yeah, they've gone yeah. to museums and things That's like great. that. How many, uh, how much of this? One tablespoon? Yes, okay. please. So I put some more we'll, butter in here. Oh, this so smells this so good. So this is just so simple. It's just so simple. Mm -hmm. Doesn't take long either. Not at all. Easy peasy. And you could make the chicken ahead of time on the weekend. Mm -hmm. But you just, you just wouldn't have the yummy bits. On you the just kind of cook pan. it, turn it over, and want to make sure it's kind of done. Mm -hmm. And chicken doesn't take as long as you think. Some people that's right like to. Kill well, the I like it again. so done that it falls apart myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
I don't think anybody wants rare chicken. No, no rare that chicken. That looks about right, doesn't it? <laughs> sure. Do I pour it in there? Yes, please. All right. Yummy. Oh, boy. Just that little fresh herb is just going to make the biggest difference. So this just heats up. It bubbles up. I'm going to put the chicken back in here. Do you think Simple. there was rosemary in the Garden of Eden? <gasps> oh. Can you, well, you I smell the, that? I wonder what the Garden of Eden smelled like. Mm. It had a lot of flowers yes, and all the herbs. Yes, fragrant, so yeah. fragrant. Oh, mm -hmm. that rosemary smells mm. so good. Here, will you put just put these back? On the, you know, we have to sink. go. On, we have to go on and on Please. about this because there's nothing to do. Right. <laughs> We're just talking. Right. So I'm just gonna put the chicken back in here. Mm -hmm. You could have this with rice. You could have it with noodles. You could have it with a salad. So many options. And we. Ooh. Bring that plate over here for me, if you would. Yeah, that plate. This one. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I just want to taste the sauce. Yeah, go right ahead. Mm. I know what chicken tastes like. And I know we have a, a wonderful guest to get to, so I'm going to try, I'm just going to put this oh. up here. So good, right? Oh, you've got to taste that. Yeah. Let me do a little cut in here. So I will good. be doing that when I have company, so and they will easy. think I'm a French. I so it, yeah. Dip it in there. That rosemary <laughs> adds so, and it was just and a tablespoon. And the whipping cream. But that rosemary. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen, my friends. So good. We've done, we've done over three thousand recipes yes. on this show. Mm -hmm. I would put this way towards the top, just. And you might want to. Do you think you would want to thicken that a bit? I'd probably just do a, a yeah, a, a slurry. You know, take some um, cornstarch and water, mix just it a, together. Just a little bit. Just to thicken it up a little bit. Sure. This might be in our next cookbook, right? It, it will be. <laughs> Might be on the cover, you know. So this is called chicken with rosemary butter sauce, and uh, it's yours free for nothing. The information's coming up on your screen, and just get it any way that's convenient for you. Okay, stay with me. I want you to meet Vera Jo Strickland, uh, just an outstanding Christian lady, and you'll see what I mean when I talk to her. Stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I am so glad to introduce to you Vera Jo Strickland, and lady, I am so impressed with your accomplishments. Well, thank you. And I know the books, that's just part of what you've accomplished through your life. Um, I, I read a little uh, forward about your life. Can you give me just a quick biography? You, you were born into a farmer's home, right? Yes, uh, 83 years ago. Uh, there was um, a small farm. My mother was the first... Uh, farmer in the family. My dad picked fruit for a dollar a day in order to f survive and she made the farm. Uh, she so could, she ran the farm? She could plow a mule or drive a tractor as the years went by and cook anything and everything to feed 20 or 30 people at the time. So, and she's the inspiration for this book in many ways, right? She is part of it, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Morocco, North Africa about 25 or 30 years ago and on the way home, flying over the ocean, the Lord gave me the scripture that's on the back side for my last years as my calling. And that's to share the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord with the younger generations. Well, that, that perfect. It's perfect for this program. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it to you. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Right. And that's the job of parents, to do that. For sure, well, right? I'm a parent, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother. Uh, and yes, yeah. I share with all of them. Now, um, your mom, you said she cooked for 20 or so people. Were those farm hands or? No, I mean, as the years went by, there were that many who would eat at her table. Mm -hmm. Even when she was in her 80s, her table was always room for one more. So our family, that was the same way. We have uh, children by birth. We have children by adoption. We had uh, foster children. And we've had um, 
kids that we just borrowed from other families. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I read that, your mother always fixed extra. Right. <clears throat> I wonder, did you do that when you became? Yes. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday when I would be making the potatoes before we would go to Sunday school and church, then I would ask the Lord, how many potatoes do I need in the pot for today? So, wow. Now, I want to compare some things with you. As I mentioned at the top of the show, my uncle was a farmer. And during the school holidays, I would go there for okay. three or four weeks to help my aunt. Was she, it fun? Oh, <laughs> my dad was a pastor. Mm. And I thought, why would he want to be a pastor if he could have been a farmer? That's actually what I thought. Mm. And my uncle let me drive the tractor when I was 12. and But I helped my aunt. She had little kids and... She's so fussy about everything being perfect. Right. Probably kind of hard to do on a farm. But uh, we had to feed the farm hands, they called them. Right. And it wasn't lunch. No. It was a big no. dinner. You would have two or three meats and uh -huh. vegetables, right? Yes, breads. And uh huh. Like. My head, I was asleep before my head hit the pillow. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can gonna, understand that. Y yes, I, I've never worked so hard in my life. Uh, we're going to put up her Gmail address. And from there, you can find out more about her books. Um, as I said already, to put together 365 devotionals. 66. 66, yeah, because you didn't. There's a reason. You didn't. Is it the leap year thing? Yes, it is. Yeah. My husband and I married on February 29th. Well. <laughs> We've been married 64 years, and uh, uh We've only had now 16 anniversaries. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> that day deserved a really good devotional, I would think, uh, February 29th. Yep. Um, how long did it take you? Uh, I've had Carol Kent on, and she's written a wonderful devotional, you know, for every day of the year. Uh, how long does it take to put together 365? Well, it, the longest part was the printing part. It took me uh, probably about a year to put them all together. But I was already putting a devotional on our Sunday School Classes website every day. And then uh, I would be sharing with my kids things that happened or uh, with the extra kids that always found their way to our house. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in that way, I had things in my mind and heart and then I just put them out. It took me about a year to get it all written. It took me about six months to proof it. And then it took almost a year to be able to get it printed. Did you do it on a computer? Yes. Good for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know the, the fundamentals <clears throat> of the computer, but my grandchildren take care of that all the time. Uh -huh. So they yeah. keep me going. Mimi has to have a job <laughs> to keep going. What but now we always cooked and, and we always canned Yes, oh, my so, mother canned. Yeah, we can six, eight hundred quarts of vegetables every year. What kind of vegetables? Three kinds of peas, three kinds of beans, corn, cream. Corn. And you grew those as yes. well? Yes. Um, is that a lost art? I, I think I had a, a little girl on once who made, um, well, it was freezer jelly, so it wasn't really canning. Right. So... No, we do jellies, too. Do you think people do that still? Not as much, but it's coming back because I know my grandchildren uh, are beginning to pay attention to those kind of things. And I have children who helped us in their teen years to do, like, the creamed corn. All right, then about a month ago, they let me know that they had bought corn because we don't have a, a garden right now. And uh, they had bought the count corn, and they had put it all up and frozen it, and they had brought me, uh, I think, about two dozen of the quart packages of cream corn. So it has gone in that family to mm -hmm. one more generation. So they just cut a, the corn kernels off of the cob? Yes, mm -hmm. you have. A, um, I do that you, for salads sometimes, and they're so fresh. Yeah. yeah, well, we do it, though, with a, a wooden uh, instrument, and then it makes it, it c takes the milk out and all at the same time. So we would put up 150 quarts of cream corn. That's a lot of corn. That's a lot. <laughs> and then we all Do you eat it all in a year? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Between all the families, you know, we'd eat it all in a year. 
But uh, we also would, when we would get ours done first, then we would turn the garden over to uh, friends and people around that would need it, and they could come in and, and glean mm -hmm. what was left. If you just join me, I'm talking to Vera Jo Strickland, an amazing lady, and um, for many reasons, but it kind of blows my mind that a lady born on a farm, and you married a farmer, right? Yes. Yes. No, I take it back. I said I'd never marry a farmer, uh -huh. <laughs> and he was a plumber when I married him. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I had three older brothers, and he would come at the end of his day, and he would work with them on the farm, and he loved it. And so it was there. You go. Yeah. Never left, say never. Right. Yeah. He left the the plumbing shop for the but farm. This lady has written a couple of books. Uh, Mama said, and this is a devotional for an entire year. And this is very impressive. This is a cookbook from plow to chow and from seed to seed. And um, what what ever inspired you to do this? Because we put out a a cookbook is a lot of work. It took me about a year to do mm -hmm. all of those. Uh, and I have one more book that I'm working on What's now. What's that? That's going to be all the stories from teaching Sunday school, teaching piano, uh, mentoring. Uh, that'll be my last book. I hope to finish it before the Lord calls me <laughs> home. <laughs> okay, now where did these recipes come from? They are either mine if there's no name on it, it's one that I have, I made up. But if it has a name on it, then those were promises kept to uh, girls in the Sunday school class that like to cook. So if they wanted to go in my first book, then they gave me a recipe to share. So if there's a name on it, it's from one of them. So I'm sure you've tried most of them. I've cooked them all. All of them, yeah. Over the years. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer young. <laughs> I've coached you still a lot teach of piano? Yes. Well, keep it up. We, we need mm -hmm. some good piano players. Yes. Some of them in the churches today aren't very good, but that's another subject. I've had uh, four students who went on to be professional uh, in their ministries. Who, um, who got you to take piano lessons? My mother. She heard me sing one time. She said, you need to learn to play the piano. You know, there's so many bandwagons I'd like to get on, <laughs> but, uh, but that's one of them. Well, you can learn a lot of things on a piano bench besides just music. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. you know, music, there's a portion of your right. brain that helps your math right. and other things. Right. Uh, every child, every child should have some basic and music. And if they stay with it, then uh, it uses all the parts of the body, mm -hmm. the feet, mm -hmm. the legs, mm -hmm. you know, the well, hands. Keep, the, right. Yeah, yeah, just keep right. it up. Uh, you know, my... My grandfather, my dad, my husband, my son, they're all pastors. And so we know a lot about church and church people. And let me tell you something. I just met you, but you're every pastor's dream. <laughs> well, thank you and praise him. <laughs> praise the Lord. You um, know, somebody that get in there and teach Sunday school and you're there and you'll have people over for dinner. and. We could just use a whole lot more like that in the church. Oh, my goodness. Think how many things in the Bible share over a table. That's right. Yeah. And Jesus included. Right. Now, my grandfather was a pastor, uh, starting out with doing the circle thing. Mm -hmm. And then he would go to uh, uh, actually staying with one church for the last years that he uh, was a pastor. And my father was the deacon. And at the same time, that didn't buy me my salvation. You know? No way. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it did bring me up in the church, you know, and it was it was a blessing. Um, I know, and uh, we're both great grandmothers here, and only only at this vantage point, I think, can you see the incredible blessing and benefit from raising the family right. in the Sunday school class, yeah. in the church, getting the word of God. Nothing can take the place of that. We had a wonderful Sunday school class of young adults, and um, they stayed with us. So now they're in their 60s and mm -hmm. 80s along with us. But they started when they were young in the class. Uh, and, and they were actually the ones who gave me enough money to go on the trip to North Africa. Uh, was it a missionary trip? It was a prayer uh, walk 
with um, Manette Drumwright with the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, and we prayer walked from north uh, Morocco all the way down to the end oh, of that's Morocco. Awesome. It was because you couldn't, you know, do a lot of things there, but at the same time you could pray. You can pray yeah, anywhere. That's right. Mm -hmm. oh. And it really was. I let the class know that first Sunday when I committed to going. And on the farm, we didn't have the money for me to go, but I let the class know I wanted to go. I felt like it was the will of the Lord for me to go. Within two hours, uh, I had been given enough money to go on this trip and even enough money by one group that uh, gave, us ex gave me extra money to bring home gifts. So. And that's the Lord. That's a, that's a beautiful yep. payment. In two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, Praise said, the Lord. Well, I guess it's yeah. a good thing I'm going to yeah. go because <laughs> he provided it all. I just want to um, remind the audience, this lady is Vera Jo Strickland, and we've had her Gmail up there. That's the way to find out more about these books. And you can get them on Amazon. The devotional is called Mama Said. It's got a lot of great scripture in it. It's going to be a real inspiration to you. And the From Plow to Chow and Seed to Seed cookbook. And you got another one going on. Got another one going on. <laughs> it's lots of stories. Mm -hmm. Looking back, uh, what would you say to the young mothers that are watching? You know, people are going in so many directions today, and it's a lot different. We're, we're hammered with technology. I wonder what it does to our brains. And One of the things that I usually sign the cookbook with is to make sure you set your table with love before you set it with dishes because it That's really good. doesn't matter what the food on the plate is. Mm -hmm. What matters is the fact that you cooked it with love and then you shared it with someone else. So. Boy, that's so refreshing mm -hmm. because I honestly believe in American homes, a lot of times both parents are working. Right. They might get home and throw a little fast food on the table or you know, just something and there's like time, something you need to get through. Yeah, there's a time for that. Yes. But then if you don't make time for that setting the table with love before you set it with anything, then you've missed a real blessing, a that real is, opportunity. That is such mm -hmm. great advice. And I'm so thankful to meet you and also for the lady who sent me these books and told me all about me you. Me too. <laughs> there's, I think there's a lot of people out there thanking God that uh, you're on Homekeepers today. You've said some great things. Well, thank you. And I want you to be sure that uh, any of these things that we mentioned, that you get the information, that you can uh, get some of the books of our authors and so forth, that we try to make that available to you. Now, uh, you stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, I want to again remind you of this booklet, Putting an X Through Anxiety. I think it's the most timely thing we've ever offered on this program. There's so much anxiety in our nation. And uh, this, I think, could go a long way in helping you if you have problems like that or you know someone. So it's available for any gift to this ministry. And the information is on your screen and we'll be glad to get it right out to you. <clears throat> like you, I have been disturbed, saddened, and downright angry watching our beautiful cities pummeled and burned. This violence has erupted in the face of our recent pandemic where the word essential has been tossed around like a ping pong ball. One thing I know for certain, if God is not essential in the life of a nation, the outcome is not a surprise to those who know scripture. In fact, it is eerily predictable. In my lifetime, I've watched our nation slowly, consistently remove all references of God from any place of prominence. You know, when I attended public schools, God held a place of distinction and recognition. 
I believe it was in 1963 that just one godless woman managed to get prayer expelled from America's classrooms. This signaled the gradual removal of the welcome mat for the God of creation, the God of all wisdom, the God of all knowledge. The Bible, you know, the book that teaches humanity exactly how to get along has been tossed aside, has been replaced by the teaching of humanism and the importance of feelings. The Ten Commandments, the Sermon on the Mount, and the Golden Rule cover in totality rules for a peaceful society. However, our duly elected leaders in their collective wisdom decided that liquor stores and abortion mills are essential, while churches who teach these time-honored proven truths are placed in the non-essential category. The staggering numbers of infant Americans killed by abortion is actually celebrated in our culture while lavish parades mocking biblical marriage gain more and more acceptance. When I watch young, no conscience, rioters steal, smash, and burn, I can't help but wonder, how were they raised? Did Jesus have a seat at their table? Did someone make certain that Sunday school, worship, and church services were part of the family routine? Did sports, clubs, and other activities become more important than regular church attendance, more important than God in the lives of family members. As they say, it's really not rocket science. Second Kings 2015 poses the sobering question, what have they seen in thy house? As we watch the most blessed nation in history under siege, many would ask, why? I can only ask why not. The scripture states, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Isaiah 1, 7 offers words that paint a solemn picture of America today. Your country is desolate. Your city is burned with fire. Think about it. And remember, friend, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.